Hello world! In this tutorial I'm going to show you how we created this nice animation waving effect in a live stream. It was pretty fun, so let me show you what it does. We have here some input fields and a label. And when we click on the input field because we want to type in it, look at that. The label nicely jumps up, but every letter does so. So that's fun. Also password. And if we type something in, it will remain there on top. So that's nice, right? Let's see how we can build this. So here we have again an empty CodePen project. And the first thing we're going to do will be the HTML. Let's have a title, fun, waving, animation. And we're going to have the input and the label be wrapped inside a div with a class of form control. This is used in Bootstrap and it just stick with me. Here we're going to have an input and we're going to have a label which will say email like that. Keep in mind that the label has to go after the input, that's very important. Let's copy this over and here we're going to have password like that. One requirement for this animation to take effect will be to have the required property set here because we're going to use the CSS valid pseudo element so we need to check to see if the input has something in it. This require does that. So it will tell the CSS that it's valid or not valid. And based on that, we're going to style the label. All right, let's get into the CSS. I have some general styles here. Let me paste it in. So basically it centers everything here in the center and has font. And yeah, that's pretty much it. If you're following along with my tutorial so far, this is basically what I use in most of them. Now let's focus on what is important. So the form control, we're going to have it be a width of 300 pixels. So let's make it a fixed width. And we're going to have it be position relative because we want to place the label inside the input here. So we need to do that with position absolute, which has to be inside a element which has another position than static. So we're going to say relative. And let's add some margin on top and the bottom. All right, perfect. Now let's style the input inside it. Or control input. Let's see. We want to remove the border and only have a border border button of two pixels solid and some darkish color. All right, perfect. Let's add a padding of 15 pixels zero. Make it display block, flex, and make it a weight of 100%. You can see now that the font is different. So we're going to inherit the font family. Okay, let's change it. Font size, 18 pixels. This is just some random styling. It's not the most important part of the tutorial, but it has to be done. First, we want to play with the focus pseudo element. When the input is focused, we want to do the following. You want the border bottom color to be dark salmon, like that. And the outline, let's remove it from none. Now, when we click inside, so when it's focused, you see the border changes color. Let's add the transition. 0.1 seconds and is in so it just adds a little bit of position now let's style the label so form control and label as i said this has to be position absolute so now we can place it on top 50 percent and left zero you can see now how nice it aligns there right on top of the text let's increase the font size also font size 18 pixels 
like that. So now it's basically like the text inside the input. The important part. So when we have the input valid or focused, we want the label to go up. So basically that's why we have the positioning also. This is another use of the positioning. So let's do that. Form control input. Let's do focus now. Plus label. We're going to do the following. Color will be dark. Solomon. And transform will go up. So translate y minus 30 pixels. Like that. So if we click now on the input, look at that. The label jumps up. Alright, so now we're starting to see something happening. Also, here you can see that the label jumps up. What we want to do now is to have the valid selector so that the email stays up there when it's valid. So we can copy this, add a comma, and here we can say valid also. So now you can see that the email stays up there because the input field is valid. We want it to be required, so that means we want it to have something inside. And because it has, the email goes up, so it's a valid. Let's also have the valid here because we want the input to have this color. Okay, look at that. So now we have the password is empty, but if we click here and we add something and we click away, it will stay up, which is exactly what we want. Let's remove those. And now for the animation of each letters, we're going to need to add a little bit of JavaScript, which will basically take the word, it will split it up in separate letters, and we're going to wrap a span around them. And then we're going to animate the span. So each letter goes up, but it will have a little delay. So let's see how to do that inside the JavaScript. So here we're going to target the labels. It will be document carry selector all and form control we want all the labels inside the form control perfect now let's loop over them labels for each label and here we want to do the magic so we take label inner html to be label that inner text so the text here is email and here is password, split it. This will create an array of letters. Look at that, we have the commas already, perfect. And we want to map over each of the letters. So letter, and we also need the index. Okay, let me put this on a separate row so we can see better, perfect. So we take the inner text, we split it, and we loop over all the letters. And here we want to return the letter be surrounded by a span. We don't need this, we can just say something like this, okay, and we have span, and inside we're going to have the letter. Now we can see it's pretty much the same. We have a little spacing though, so let's remove like that. Okay, the next thing will be to have a style transition delay because we want to delay the animation for every span element. All right, so let's add the transition on the span so we can see what happens. We're going to take this and we're going to style the span inside the label. We don't need this and this and neither this. Okay, we can delete those all. We want a transition to be 0 0.3 seconds cubic bezier and we want to have a nice transition here so I found these values which make it look nice we can have it be like ease by default and then we can use this to see so you can see what's the difference so we have the transition now but we don't change the span transform or anything so we can see it in action in order to do that let's change here to span label that span. So we take the form control, the input if it's focused or valid, and then we take the label and the span inside. 
we're going to change it to dark salmon and we're going to push it up. So let's see now. I forgot to add display inline block. Okay, that is required. Now if we click, look at that. It nicely goes up. Let's remove those commas. We have this pen. We map over and at the end we want to join it. Dot join. All right, now you can see that the letters are next to each other. And perfect, we have the animation. All the span elements go up when we click it and they remain there if we have something inside. Good. So now the last thing we have to do is to have a transition delay so that every letter will go up later. So here inside the style, we're going to say transition delay will be based on the index, so we'll have x times 50 milliseconds. The first one will be 0 milliseconds, so it will start immediately, the second one will be 50, then 100 and so on. Let's see how this looks. If we click now, look at that. That's perfect. So we can see all the letters move with a little delay. Let's change this back to the cubic bezier so you can see the effect it has to add it. You can see it jumps up, which is, is a nicer animation. Okay, but we have just a small bug, a feature we need to, to create. For now, we only have labels with one word, but if we are going to have two words, or three words, you're going to see that all the letters will be next to each other. We loop over all the letters, including the spaces, but the spacing don't have a width. So here inside the span, we can say something like min width 5 pixels. So that basically we're adding a min width to the spacing too. And look at that, now we have the spacing also. Perfect. That's it for this tutorial. I really hope you liked it. If you did, give it a like. Subscribe for more videos like this in the future. And I'll see you in the next tutorial. Bye.